For years, the Tennessee Titans looked for a receiver to complement tight end Delaney Walker in the team's passing attack. First, they tried to reinvent a washed-up 35-year-old Andre Johnson in 2016, but Johnson only played in eight games for the Titans and the following season retired. Then, Tennessee attempted to pair Walker with former Western Michigan wide receiver Corey Davis and took Davis with the fifth overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft after he starred for the Broncos, racking up over 300 catches in four years. Quickly, though, it appeared that Davis wouldn't live up to the hype, which left the Titans searching for answers. Enter A.J. Brown. The Titans got an absolute steal in the 2019 NFL Draft after taking him midway through the second round, but how about the other wide receivers in a stacked draft class that were before him? First, I'd like to acknowledge that the majority of the people who watch our videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Help us out by subscribing and joining us on our way to 100k because it's coming fast and you don't want to miss your opportunity to enlist in the j &D Army. Arthur Juan Brown was born on June 30th, 1997 in Starkville, Mississippi, where he attended Starkville High School and played both football and baseball. As a senior, he led his team to a 6A state championship and was considered a four-star recruit and the fifth best receiving prospect in the country by 24-7 sports. After receiving offers from schools all over the country, he stayed close to home and committed to Ole Miss, a two-hour drive from his hometown. At Ole Miss, he and DK Metcalf teamed up and formed a lethal passing attack. Brown recorded 189 career receptions, 2,984 yards, and 19 touchdowns in three seasons with the Rebels. For his performance, he was named to the All-SEC First Team following his sophomore and junior seasons. After his junior season that saw him catch 85 passes for 1,320 yards and six touchdowns, Brown declared for the 2019 NFL Draft. In his rookie season, Brown quickly became a favorite deep ball target for both Marcus Mariota and Ryan Tannehill as he hauled in 52 two catches for 1,051 yards and eight touchdowns while playing in all 16 games. Brown led the Titans to an AFC wildcard berth, where the team would fall in the AFC championship game to the eventual Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. In 2020, Brown eluded a sophomore slump, recording 70 catches for 1,075 yards and 11 touchdowns. He helped lead the Titans to an AFC South championship this season, which included a seven-catch, 112-yard effort against the Jacksonville Jaguars in Week 14. But how about the three wide receivers picked before him? The first wide receiver at the 2019 NFL Draft didn't get selected until the Baltimore Ravens took Marquise Brown 25th overall. Marquise Brown, otherwise known as Hollywood Brown, didn't receive a single scholarship from a Division I school coming out of high school, so he signed with the College of Canyons in California for the 2016 season. While at the College of Canyons, Brown worked a local Six Flags job to make ends meet since California doesn't allow junior colleges to offer athletic scholarships. After a year at the College of Canyons, Brown received several Division I scholarship offers offers and committed to Oklahoma to play out his sophomore and junior seasons. During his first year at Oklahoma, Brown played in all 13 games and had a team-high 1,095 receiving yards and added 57 receptions along with 7 touchdowns. Brown also posted 265 yards against Oklahoma State, which set an Oklahoma record for receiving yards in a single game. In his final season at Oklahoma, Brown caught 75 passes for 1,318 yards and 10 touchdowns for the Sooners and announced that he would forego his senior season to enter the draft. Brown didn't sit around for long to hear his name called as the Baltimore Ravens took him with the 25th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, making him the first wide receiver selected and giving Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson another weapon. Brown burst onto the scene in 2019, recording four receptions, 147 receiving yards, and two touchdowns in a Week 1 win over the Miami Dolphins. He followed his breakout game up with an eight-reception, 86-yard effort against the Arizona Cardinals a week later. Those two games proved to be Brown's highlight of the season, however, However, over the course of the rest of the season, he only surpassed the 80-yard receiving yard total just once. For his season totals, Brown recorded 49 catches, 584 yards, and 7 touchdowns. In 2020, Brown's numbers improved as he once again started the season out strong with a 5-reception, 101-yard effort and a season-opening win over the Cleveland Browns. Brown grew publicly frustrated with the lack of involvement in the Ravens' effort after a one-catch effort against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 8. From there, Brown's usage in the offense increased as he went on to record four catches for 85 yards, including a 70-yard touchdown reception against the Steelers in Week 12. All in all, Brown caught 55 passes for 769 yards and eight touchdowns for the Ravens. 
Seven picks after the Ravens took Brown, the New England Patriots drafted Arizona State wide receiver Nikhil Harry to close out the first round. Harry became the first wide receiver that Patriots head coach Bill Belichick has drafted in the first round during his tenure with the Patriots, and the first wide receiver the Patriots have drafted in the first round since Terry Glenn in 1996. In high school, Harry starred for two Arizona high schools and was considered a five-star recruit and was noted as one of the best recruits in the nation. Like A.J. Brown, Harry received offers from many Power 5 schools across the country, but chose to remain close to home and play for the Arizona State Wildcats. In his freshman season, Harry became just the ninth true freshman in school history to start a season opener and recorded 58 catches for 659 yards and five touchdowns. Harry was honored by scout, football focus, and campus insiders as a freshman All-American. In his sophomore and junior seasons, Harry broke out in a big way for the Sun Devils and combined for 155 catches, 2,230 yards, and 17 touchdowns. He earned first team Pac-12 during his sophomore season. After being selected by the Patriots, Harry sustained an ankle injury in training camp and was placed on injured reserve before the Patriots began the season. He was activated off of injured reserve early in November and played in New England's final seven games, recording 12 catches for 105 yards and two touchdowns as the Patriots clinched their final division title with Tom Brady at the helm. In the playoffs, New England lost to A.J. Brown's Tennessee Titans in the wildcard round, while Harry caught two passes for 21 yards in Brady's final game as a Patriot. In 2020, Harry's numbers improved but certainly aren't the numbers most would expect a former first rounder to put up in his second season. In 12 games, Harry recorded 30 receptions for 289 yards and two touchdown passes, including a career-high eight reception effort against the Seattle Seahawks, where he finished the game with 72 receiving yards. Four picks after Harry was selected, the 49ers used the 36th overall selection in the second round on former South Carolina wide receiver Debo Samuel. Coming out of high school, Samuel didn't have the same recruiting pedigree that A.J. Brown and Nikhil Harry had as he was ranked only a three-star recruit. Samuel received a scholarship to the University of South Carolina to play for the Gamecocks. He sat out during his true freshman season as a redshirt and briefly saw the field in five games the next season, catching 12 passes for 161 yards and a touchdown before struggling with multiple injuries throughout the season. In 2016, Samuel broke out though, leading his team with 59 receptions for 783 yards, including a 14 reception, 190-yard performance against USF in the Birmingham Bowl. Samuel started the 2017 season on the the right foot against NC State where he caught five passes for 83 yards and two touchdowns. The next week against Missouri, Samuel returned a kickoff for a touchdown and finished with five catches for 45 yards while running the ball two times for 30 yards and a touchdown. In week three against Kentucky on the first play from scrimmage, Samuel caught a 68-yard touchdown pass from game cop quarterback Jake Bentley. Later in the game, however, Samuel suffered a broken right fibula that effectively ended his season, prompting him to return to South Carolina for his senior year. Coming off of his injury, Samuel saved the best for his last season and finished the year with 882 yards receiving on 62 catches and 11 touchdowns. His best game of the season came against Clemson where he caught 10 passes for 210 yards and three touchdowns. In his first season in San Francisco, Samuel helped lead the 49ers to a 13-3 record in a Super Bowl berth where the Niners ended up on the wrong end of a 31-20 score. Samuel caught 57 passes, turning that into 802 yards and three touchdowns. He also ran the ball 14 times for 159 yards and three touchdowns. In the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, Samuel rushed three times for 53 yards and caught five passes for 39 yards. His 53 rushing yards were the most ever by a wide receiver in Super Bowl history. 2020 was an injury-plagued football season for Samuel, just like the rest of the Niners roster. He was placed on the non-football injury list at the start of training camp on July 28th. Then he was activated on September 5th, but was once again placed on injury reserve seven days later. Again, he was activated on November 3rd, but one month after he was activated, activated off of injured reserve, he was placed on the COVID-19 list. He was activated two days later and didn't miss any game time after. All in all, Samuel played in seven games and recorded 33 receptions for 391 yards and a touchdown. Not the year everyone was expecting him to have. And finally, A.J. Brown was taken 17 picks later and has already turned into a dynamic playmaker that the Titans needed in the passing game. The future looks bright for Brown and the Titans, who just clinched the team's first division title since 2008. Thanks for watching. If you love Janie Productions, check out Janie Hoops, where we recently uploaded our first video. Go subscribe and hit that notifications bell, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter for more J&D. We read all of our DMs and love hearing what you have to say.